Hi, Coach Dale Sanford, BPC Performance Coaching. When I was in high school and college, my favorite subject was physics. I took a lot of classes, uh, but I really enjoyed dynamics and kinematics, and that's one thing that I still use uh, almost daily with my dealings with athletes, whether it's running mechanics or bike fitting. Um, there's a lot of applications for it. So real quick, all I wanted to do was explain how Newton's third law can affect our running based on different foot landing positions. So first I'll start with this one over here. This is the position, uh, foot landing position of somebody who generally is a heel striker. Um, their foot is going to land out in front of their center of mass. Their center of mass is your hips generally. So foot landing out in front of the center of mass. So when we think of how force is applied uh, to a leg, we have to think of it as a system. We can't think of it as a rigid object. So we have to think of how the force is applied to each part of the system. So first, obviously, the first thing to contact the ground is your foot. Um, there's a point where your foot is not moving anymore. And that's just because uh, force of gravity uh, and the force of the ground pushing up on you is equal, um, as well as the force of friction uh, has kind of counterbalanced the force of your forward momentum. Um, so there's a point where your foot's not moving. Uh, that energy is then passed on to the next part of the system, basically your lower leg. Um, so uh, the way that the force is then applied, the ground applies force to us, because it's an equal and opposite reaction, um, is determined by the angle of your shin. So generally on a heel striker or a, a front side contact, as we call it, uh, the shin is angled backwards. So you've got uh, downward and forward force into the ground, so the ground is then going to go opposite, going to push you backwards and upwards. Um, now, it doesn't, it happens very fast, but it doesn't all happen uh, at once. So when this lower leg is now moving upward and backwards, this upper leg, the femur, uh, is now moving, still moving downward and forward. So then you get the shearing motion at the knee joint, and that's where a lot of the pain and, and injuries that come with uh, this type of uh, foot contact position. Um, so once that uh, energy is then passed to the, uh, the upper leg, uh, the upper leg is also angled backwards upon ground contact. So then the upper leg now is pushed backwards and upward. Uh, so you can see when you make contact with the ground, the ground is literally pushing back on you. So it's stealing a lot of your speed, a lot of your momentum, um, a lot of that stuff that you worked hard to get, uh, you know, hard. It's a lot of work. Um, now moving on, we'll go to foot landing position under your center of mass or under your hips. Um, similar thing happens. The foot uh, is essentially at one point not moving. Uh, friction, uh, forces of gravity, force from the ground, it all kind of counterbalances and uh, a lot of that energy is then passed on to the tibia. But the big difference is when your foot lands underneath your hip, uh, your lower leg, uh, tibia, fibula, all those other good little bones in there, um, is angled forward. So you've got downward and backwards force into the ground, so then the ground is going to help you out by pushing you upward and forward. Um, so that you see these resultant vectors here. Um, so ground's pushing up and forward. Now the other thing with a uh, foot landing position under your center of mass, generally the upper leg is very vertical. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. Um, if it's angled a little bit forward, great. Uh, that's just more, uh, more direction. We're just directing the force forward a little bit more. Um, but most of the time it's pretty vertical. Sometimes it can be backwards. But the backwards angle on it is not going to be enough to counteract all of the force that this angle right here in the, in the lower leg is generating. So not only that, but as this, move, this leg is moving up and forward now, or this part of the system, the lower leg is moving up and forward, the upper leg is just moving downward. So we're getting a much more compressive force. Um, you know, if, if the upper leg is, is leaned forward, then you're also getting forward movement. Uh, so then you have two pieces of the system, the lower leg and the upper leg, uh, moving forward. So there's not a there's not a opposing shearing force going on there. It's a much more compressive force 
uh, which is kind of like what we do all day, every day. We stand up. Uh, well, I'm sorry, a lot of us don't stand up, but it's a it's a force that your skeletal system is made to handle. Um, so there you have it. Uh, essentially, front side contact gets you uh, momentum stealing backwards forces, whereas that foot landing position underneath the hip uh, helps you generate forward momentum every step. Um, Hopefully that gave you a little insight and in maybe whether you could or need to change your running mechanics. Uh, if you have any questions on that, don't be afraid to contact us. Um, if you want some free training tips, you can always join our newsletter. We put out a lot of good training tips over the newsletter. Uh, if you have any questions for us, don't be afraid to contact us. Appreciate you watching. Until next time.